bow before him to worship and adore him. What a mighty God we said. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, what a mighty God we said. What a mighty God we say The angels bow before Him to worship and adore What a mighty God Thank you, Jesus What a mighty God, what a mighty God we say. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we say. The angels, the angels bow. Have a mighty God, we thank you, O God, as we come right now. A commendiga Jesus Christ to bless us, increase us, cause our hearts to understand these mysteries of the kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you and we honor you. Shalom unto you, our Father, in Jesus' name, amen. We were reading yesterday in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 1. We looked at this man who stayed for 38 years. We are dealing with the subject dealing with immobile hearts hearts that cannot be moved we said there are people whose hearts cannot be moved anymore and we said the greatest tragedy tragedy on earth is not death but it is the things that die on the inside of us while we are alive while we continue to live but certain things important things have died in us like things like love like prayer like worship patience endurance giving, tithing, honor, submission, these things, once they die, your life becomes a shame in this world. Your life becomes an embarrassment. It no longer becomes worth a living in the mighty name of Jesus. So we saw yesterday that when Jesus, the Bible said he saw this man by the pool called the Bethesda. But not only did Jesus saw this man, he saw many other people, but it is, the Bible specifically says he saw him, meaning he did not only see the outside appearance of the man, but he was able to see the real problem on the inside of the man, in the mighty name of Jesus. So he saw the real problem on the inside of this man, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So the problem we, we said was not just his useless legs, but it was the immobility of his heart. Something was dead on the inside of this man that caused everything on the outside to die in the name of Jesus. The man had lost something far more important than the ability to walk. He had lost the willingness to hope. When we endure painful situations for a long time, it's easy to become so accustomed to pain that we gradually accept it as our new normal. In the name of Jesus. Winning isn't um, everything, but wanting to win is. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. The loss of something may show for a few days or months, but the loss of heart will show up for life. I hope you hear that. I can lose my car. They can steal it. I can lose my house. I've lost things many times before. I've lost cars, repossessed. I've lost a house before. I've lost things before. But the loss of anything physical or material can only appear for a few weeks or months. But the loss of heart will appear for the rest of your life. Once you lose heart, you've lost life 
you've lost everything. You can lose things, but don't lose heart. Don't lose heart in the name of Jesus. Don't lose heart. The loss of something may show for a few days or months, but the loss of heart will show up for life. That you lost heart. That when things got hard, got tough, you lost heart. I pray you don't lose heart. I feel like praying for somebody. I just pray you don't lose heart. Things may be difficult at home, in your marriage, at work, but don't lose heart. Things may be difficult with your husband, with your wife, with your children at home, with your boss at work, but don't lose heart. Things may be difficult in your community. Things may be difficult with your extended family members, with your relatives, your aunts, your cousins. Don't lose heart. May be difficult with your own parents, but don't lose heart. Because once you lose heart, that thing will show for the rest of your life. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Death is not the greatest tragedy. Tragedy, but what dies inside of us while we live is the greatest tragedy. I once told people in church a story of a man, a boy watched a man getting a tattoo. And he first, he first saw in, in this tattoo, so this man was getting a tattoo. He, he was watching through the window and he saw a writing on the, on the arm. He saw these words, born to. And then first he saw born, then they wrote to. Then this boy was so excited, fascinated by death, he kept on looking what will follow next. And then the next word that followed was fail. Born to fail. Somebody imprinting, imprinting that thing on his own arm born to lose. Then look at this now. The boy was excited and said, let me watch and see what will follow. He saw lose, born to lose. He was very disappointed and asked his grandfather, why would someone write such a negative thing on his arm? The old man said, oh my boy, it was tattooed on his heart a long time before you saw it on his arm. It was tattooed on his heart. Loss of heart. It was tattooed on his heart. It's just that today he decided to write it on his arm. But he believed in his heart for a long time that he is, he is born to lose. It was a failure. He's writing, he's expressing his heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaks. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. May you never lose the ability to hope again. Okay? The willingness to hope. Okay. So the man said, what, what? He, 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 he says, the old man said, it was tattooed on his heart a long time before you saw it on his arm. Today I want to ask you a question as I pray. What is it that is slowly dying inside of you? What is it that is slowly dying on the inside of you? Because of things things that have happened in your life. You've even changed the way you worship God. Come to church only when you feel like you sit there, you don't talk to anybody, you go to your car and go, you worship your own way, you've designed your own way of worshiping God. You do things the way you feel, you don't want to submit, you don't want to be led by anybody because of things that happen to you. You are no longer moved by anything. The word of God itself doesn't move you. Your heart is immobile. You can no longer receive from Jehovah. What is it that has slowly died? That has died. What is it that is slowly dying inside of you? What is it that is dying? You were not like this. Abandabakula now where they can attest to this. You were not like this. You were a great, good person. What happened to you that changed you to be this person that you are now? How can we help you? What happened to you? What happened to you? Whose report did you believe that changed your life? Who hurt you like this that you changed completely? What did they say to you? And your life changed to be this way.
I want to speak restoration today, tonight of our life. I want to restore the years, the lo what the locusts and the canker worms took away from you. I want to restore you to your original self. You are not, you were not like this. You had a good heart. You cared for people. You were patient with people. You were not angry like this. What made you so angry? You are, you are so nice to people outside. You are a bully at home. Why are you like this? People outside, they know you as an angel, but you are a lion, a bully at home. Nobody speaks to you. Everybody is afraid of you at home, but you are a darling outside, a national hero and a domestic failure. What made you to be this person? What made you to be this person? The world is shouting praises, singing praises of you. At home they are crying because of you. You make other people happy outside. You make your wife cry at home. What made you to be like this? You make other people's children happy outside. You make your own children suffer and cry. Why are you like this? What happened to you? Because you need help. You lost something. You lost something. You lost something. You lost something. Everybody's celebrating you except for your children and your wife. They cry every day. They run, they hide. They don't know what to do. Because you are such a bully to them and you are a darling outside. You are living a double standard, double life. What happened to you? Why are you like this? Why are you like this? Is it the spirit of your father? Is it a generational case? What happened to you? No normal person behave like this. You are not normal. This is not how you're supposed to live life. Listen to me. I would rather be a failure outside and be a hero at home. I'm telling you my true story. I would rather be celebrated by my children and by my wife and be insulted and accused by everybody. I don't care because I sleep, to, uh, I sleep at home. I don't sleep outside where I'm celebrated. One of my greatest bishops, Bishop T.D. Jakes, he said to me the other day, he said he was preaching in Nigeria. He was supposed to preach that night. I'm closing on this. Bishop Jakes was supposed to preach in Nigeria and he was already in Lagos when they called him back home and they said his child was admitted all of a sudden in a hospital. It's a heart issue. And they suspected this child would die anytime. And Jake said, I called my wife and I said, please put the phone on my child's ear. And he put the phone on the child. And Bishop said, Bishop Jake said to the child, listen to me, just hold on, don't lose heart. Daddy is on his way. I'm coming home. I'm coming home right now. Bishop said he was paid to preach there. And millions of people were already at the stadium waiting for him. To... He said immediately, I went with my, with my crew to my private jet. We flew back to, to Dallas, Texas. And he said, I called the pastor who was hosting me and I said, I'm sorry, I cannot preach tonight. Those that I love the most are in trouble back home. He said, I want my children to know that they matter to me more than any other thing that I do. And then he said, when I entered the hospital, when I was walking through the corridors of the hospital, the child had him and he said, yes, daddy, yes, daddy. I told you my daddy will be here. I know every time I'm in trouble, my daddy will be here. That is how your family should know you. That, that is how your children should know you. They should not only know you as the one celebrated outside, but you are a failure at home. Rather be a failure outside and be celebrated at home. We are tired of television heroes and failures at home. We are tired of celebrities who are heroes outside and failures at home. We are tired. If you want to change your, the world, go love your family. Go love your family. We are tired of people clapping hands for you, singing praises, saying you are a great person. You give money to people to help others. Why at home they need the same help? You have not helped them. Charity begins at home. You have lost something. We need to pray for you. You've lost something. 
You've lost something. Wherever you are, please join me in prayer now. You've lost something. You've lost something. You've lost something. You've lost something. I surrender. Oh, thank you, Lord God Almighty. I surrender all, all to Jesus, all to Jesus, all oh, my place and Savior, I surrender. May the Lord help you. I pray in the name of Jesus. May the Lord restore you. Restore everything that you lost. May he restore hope, faith, love, compassion. Love for your family, love for your wife, love for your husband. Love for your husband, love for your children. Love for all those close to you. I pray may you not be a national hero and be a domestic failure. May you never be celebrated outside while you are failing at home. This is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. Because I know families that are crying, yet people are celebrating you outside. May you not be that person. May the Lord restore you, restore your house, restore everything. May you recover all as I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, let the glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pazalwane, we are meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. We have such a powerful Sunday service here. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Just be on your screens. Be Tell everybody, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. You cannot afford to miss. We're talking about powerful spirits tomorrow. You cannot afford to miss. I'll be addressing the issues of spirits that have caused delays in people's life. You cannot afford to miss and to ignore it. So as you watch, create the watch parties in the name of Jesus. Right now, I want you to start giving. Give your offering, give your tithe. And I appreciate all those who have constantly been giving to this ministry. Give your offering, give your tithe, give your seed right now. These accounts are appearing on the screen for you so that you give and the Lord will bless you. And send us a message, a WhatsApp message on this number also appearing on the screen. We'll call you, we'll pray for you in the name of Jesus. We'll speak a word of blessing over your life. In Jesus' mighty name, shalom unto you. See you Sunday morning. I can't wait to see you online. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for all health practitioners, doctors, nurses, all those working in the health sector everywhere. For all leaders of the world, we pray for South Africa and the whole world. In the name of Jesus, as we face this pandemic, remember this coronavirus is real, it kills. So take care, follow every precautionary measures. Uh, uh, put before you by uh, our authorities, by those in the health sector. Make sure you sanitize your, 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 your hands. Make sure you wash your hands uh, with soap and water in the mighty name of Jesus. Make sure you put on your mask as you go outside in the name of Jesus. Make sure you follow all these things to the latter in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't fool yourself. Don't be fooled by people. Just follow what you have been taught. In Jesus' mighty name, and the Lord bless you. Shalom. In Jesus' name, amen.